So like most of you mercurial knuckle draggers out there, I have an opinion. And of course, this video is dedicated to that. To a lot of people, places like Shanghai and Sochi are the worst tracks ever in the history of Formula One, ever, history. Ever. But when you examine the list of all the circuits that have been on the calendar, are they really the worst? Well, since people value my opinion for some reason, here are my top 10 worst Formula 1 tracks of all time. Now before I delve into this, I really need to stress the fact that I'm not going to include pre-existing circuits before they were supposedly butchered by Herman Tilke. Look, I mean, hey, I get it. He ruined Hockenheim, allegedly. But like, hey look, calm your tits for a moment. I might just save that for another video. But for this one, we're going to be sticking to the the originals. Alright, got it? Sweet, let's get into it. Number 10, Marina Bay. This may be a little bit surprising to some, but let me ask you this. If this race wasn't run under the lights, is there much reason to look forward to this race? The idea of racing under lights on a beautifully laid out track is certainly eye candy for most, but the racing itself never really has been one to look forward to. It's kind of like Monaco. There really aren't many places to pass on this circuit, and really perhaps the circuit's most infamous race was back in 2008, although that race in itself was such a can of worms that it in itself should be reserved for another video. Aside from a couple crashes here and there which provided something for the highlights reel, the passing opportunities were minimal and ultimately most of these races turned out to be ball fests. No offence to Singapore, but this thing really isn't a good F1 circuit. Still want to go though, the lure of night racing in a tourist hotspot does that I guess, and it ain't too far from Middle Earth either. Number 9. Le Mans. Yep, Formula 1 once raced at Le Mans, but not on the circuit you're thinking of. The thought of racing down the Morson in an F1 car is something that drivers of the time had actually pledged. Ow! It's something they should probably look at doing now. But the safety conscious people of the time thought that the use of the relatively new Bugatti circuit would be apt enough to host the premium motor racing category of the time. Compared to the full-on Circuit de la South, this circuit was pretty flat and featureless. Drivers and spectators alike thought it was boring, with only 20,000 people turning up, and so only held one Grand Prix back in 1967 before moving on to Rouen the next year. Number 8. Korea. As a tractor drive on, Korea is actually a pretty decent facility, but from almost every other aspect, it was a flop. Whilst the circuit now hosts a slew of GT races on the calendar year, it didn't see out the seven year deal put in place starting from 2010. The racing itself was pretty dismal, with few good memories coming from it, especially if you're Mark Webber. The pit lane too was scary as shit, given how if you went too slow, you got hit up the rear. If you went too fast, you went into the port of Mokpo. The track itself was designed well enough to produce some good racing in the first sector and at least half of the second but the tight twisty nature of the rest of the circuit meant that passing could only be done if you threw others out of the way and remember this was in the era of the Maldonado even so we really didn't see this the track now sits out in amongst a sea of rice fields far removed from the world stage where it's 15 minutes of fame burned out real fast number seven Detroit Motor City Motown the home of the motor car and riots, and in the mid 80s, one very ordinary Grand Prix track. Spectators really couldn't see the track too well, unless they had some good tickets, or an office in a high rise. The surface was appallingly bumpy, the layout was too narrow and twisty for any degree of good racing, and the heat meant that what would have been a hard day's work already was made just that little bit harder. It was often considered quite the feat if you could just finish the damn race. Then take all of that and consider that the racing was almost never Good. Formula One Circus left in 1987, going over to Phoenix the following year. Number six. Valencia. Valencia has a fantastic motorsport facility at the circuit Ricardo Tormo. This circuit has been proven to be fantastic for all forms of motorsport and being only 20 minutes from Valencia, an ideal place for the Valencia Formula 1 race. Problem is, the people in charge didn't see it that way. Instead, they opted for a street circuit around the harbour of Valencia, which ultimately culminated in some of the worst races ever. The circuit itself varied very little in elevation change, scenery was far from flattering given they were nestled in the docks, and passing opportunities, whilst existent, would require some very opportunistic or very stupid driving. Few good things came from this course. Number 5. Dallas. In an attempt to demonstrate Dallas as a world-class city, the Texan state decided that bringing the Formula 1 circus to their backyard was just what they needed. This circuit would host only one Grand Prix in 1984. There were a few reasons why it was only one Grand Prix. Namely, the temperatures were too hot, the track was literally melting as a result, and the track layout itself was all kinds of shithouse. The track breaking up was a 
particular problem, with repairs not being completed until 30 minutes before the start of the Grand Prix. Naturally, drivers pondered boycotting the event, but the race went on anyway, with JR Ewing starting the race, and what we were treated to was pretty damn average, with the only memorable thing coming out of it was Nigel Mansell collapsing whilst pushing his car to the finish. Noble effort, but he did kind of make a habit of smacking his head on things back in the day. Formula 1 would not return to the state of Texas until 2012, with the Circuit of the Americas, and the slot left vacant on the 1985 calendar would be taken up by Adelaide. I suppose this story does have a happy ending then, doesn't it? Number 4. Zeltvig. Before the Red Bull Ring, there was Zeltvig. In terms of historical significance, Zeltvig played a key role in the Austrian Grand Prix becoming an event at all, but that doesn't excuse it from its own set of problems. The issue with the circuit was, well, there were several issues with it really. The layout was, to put it nicely, simple. The racing wasn't particularly interesting as a result, and the surface was appalling, due to the concrete slabs that were used to construct the airfield wearing out over time, causing them to break up, move about, and proving an extremely uncomfortable battle bouncy castle for all the drivers. Fun fact, this was the place where Lorenzo Bandini scored his only Formula 1 victory. Actually, I don't know if that's a fun fact. Kinda sad actually. Number 3. Yas Marina. Yeah, you saw this one coming, didn't you? To be fair, there are some sections of the circuit which do provide some good battles, and the facility itself is impeccable. Under lights on a Grand Prix weekend, this circuit really is spectacular. However, we're often tuned in to watch a Formula 1 race to watch this thing called racing. Good old, hard fought racing. Have we ever gotten this at Yas Marina? Most of you would say no. And you're right. Aside from the fact that it kinda ruined the end of the 2010 season, the only other race of note is the finale of the 2016 season, although that was mainly down to Lewis Hamilton slowing down the pack to try and get the Ferraris to win the world championship for him. A little weird, but that's just how it was. But this also brought out the circuit's problem. You can't really pass anywhere on it. I mean, there is the hairpin, if you're opportunistic, turn 8, turn 9, if you do the switchback, and turn 11. Anywhere else would be either impossible or impossible. Unfortunately, it looks set to be a firm fixture of the Formula 1 calendar for years to come. One can only hope that modifications are made to the circuit to improve its racing. Number 2. Sochi. I have absolutely no defense for this circuit. There are boring circuits, and then there are crap circuits, and then there's 50 feet of shit, and then there is the Sochi Autodrome. Located in the Olympic Park where the 2014 Winter Olympics were held, the Sochi Autodrome has played host to the Soviet, sorry, Russian Grand Prix since 2014. Initially, when looking at the track layout, there were concerns. The track just didn't look to provide overtaking opportunities that we would like. Eventually, these fears were realized. And if it weren't for the spectacular third turn, or the run down to turn one, it probably would have taken another one spot. Now look, I know that Herman Tilke designed this thing, but we can't give this guy too much crap. After all, you got to design for your client, not for yourself. Much like with Hockenheim, Tilke is just doing the job of designing the track. Not tearing down the circuit, cutting through the forest that we all love, or putting a circuit in the middle of buttfuck nowhere, with limited space, with grandstands full of fans, hoping for the return of Vitaly Petrov. By the way, if you want to see what else he can design? Have a look at the Blisterberg. That's a good circuit. But anyway, we're stuck with this circuit for the foreseeable future until such time that the interest is just waited completely, but I really don't see that happening, so I guess we're going to be stuck with this contraption forever. And now, for some honourable mentions. Number 1. Caesar's Palace. With all the talks about bringing Formula 1 to Las Vegas, perhaps this circuit should serve as a warning from history. Back in the early 1980s, the Caesar's Palace Hotel higher-ups brokered a deal to host a Formula 1 race in their car park. The circuit itself was pretty well presented for being in a freaking car park, but of course, there were problems with it. It would have been a bit of a throwaway race, had it been in the middle of the calendar year, but the circuit was used to host the final race of the season for 1981 and 1982, the year where John Watson and K.K. Rosberg fought out the World Championship. Had that thing been held in a more contemporary circuit such as Brands Hatch or Monza, or whatever, the lack of good racing probably would have been looked over. But the boring layout, which in itself caused issues on the driver's neck, as they were always turning left, and the fact that no one turned up ultimately culminated in what most would agree to be the worst Formula 1 track of all time. So, what circuit do you guys reckon is the worst? I'm sure this will create some good debate, but try and keep it clean guys. Or hey, I mean you can abuse each other, I really don't give a f***.